Hello, Booktube! Um, welcome to another edition of Erin's Book Club. First, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, I know I usually do Friday days are the clicker training days. I'm going to actually move the clicker training days to um, uh, Saturdays. Just because I'm running out of time on the Fridays, and the Fridays are tending to, to really wear me out. Um, I'm also going to start decreasing Athena's schedule for the next little bit because she's still off and I want to give her a bit of a break. So what I will do in is break in the ground driving or the groundwork exercise book um, uh, along with the clicker training book. Like the it'll be a different like series so that um, we can still have some interaction, but I can just go nice and easy on her until uh, until the big surprise that's coming at the end of the month. But all of that being done and over with, I have a book haul. So Friday book haul um, for the week. I think it's it's become easier if I do a weekly book haul because I tend to be getting a lot of books through Goodreads um, and friends and stuff. Um, that if I did a book haul every time I got a book, it would it would be a long a lot of little videos. So we'll just do one longer video. Okay, so let's start with our book haul. So many books. Um, we're gonna start with a Nicholas Sparks book that um, my friend at work gave me. She gave me three books. She says this is the phenomenal one. So. Um, this is Nicholas Sparks' Best of Me. She said this is an amazing book. Uh, let me read the back. Maybe I'll read the back with all the others with the book hauls and review, review the back when I do my reviews, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Okay, so here's the back of The Best of Me. In the spring of 1984, high school students Amanda Collier and Dawson Cole fell deeply in love. Though they were from opposite sides of the tracks, their love for each other seemed to defy the realities of life in the small town of Oriental, North Carolina. But as the summer of their senior year came to a close, unforeseen events would tear the young couple apart, setting them on radically divergent paths. Now, 25 years later, Amanda and Dawson are summoned back to Ori Oriental for a funeral. Neither has lived the life they imagine, and neither can forget the passion the first love that forever changed their lives. Forced to confront painful memories, the two former lovers soon realized that everything they thought they knew about them th themselves and the dreams they held dear was not as it seemed. In the course of a single searing weekend, they will ask of the living and the dead, can love truly rewrite the past? That sounds intriguing. I've heard a lot about Nicholas Sparks. I think Nicholas Sparks is a good author. Next one. This one I'm excited about. Um, 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 here we are. This, remember the Emily Bronte that I, I wrote, I think Charlotte was the name, that I read a while ago and I thought was really, really good, like, kind of like, um, the, the Pride and Prejudice, but better. I got another one, again, from my friend at work, called With Wuthering Heights, um, by Emily Bronte, which is the sister of the Charlotte Bronte one that I got. So, here's this one. Heathcliff comes to the brooding mansion of Wuthering Heights as an orphan child. Kathy is the daughter of the wealthy family that takes him in. They are drawn together from the moment they meet, their love consuming, destructive, and full of desire. They cannot be together, and yet they cannot stay apart. The consequences will haunt generations. This is the chilling story of two people who experience love and all its intense complications. It is a story you will not soon forget. And if it's like the Charlotte Bronte one, I think I'm going to really enjoy this one. So excited about that one. They're coming. I got another Nicholas Sparks book. This Nicholas Sparks book was given to me from another friend at work. She read it as well and said that it was a very good one. This one's called... Oh, hang on. The other one was Best of Me. This one is called At First Sight. Um, okay, At First Sight. There were a few things Jeremy Marsh was sure he'd never do. He'd never leave New York City, he'd never give his heart away after barely surviving one failed marriage, and he'd never become a parent. Now Jeremy is living in a tiny town in Bront Creek, North Carolina, engaged to the love of his life, Lexi Darnell, and anticipating the start of their family. But just as everything seems to be settling into a, into a blissful pattern, a mysterious email sets off a chain of events that will test the strength of Jeremy Jeremy and Lexi's love, um, and as they cope with the doubts, fears, romance, and romance of newlywed, 
Jeremy will discover an extraordinary truth. The emotion that can break your heart is sometimes the very one that heals it. Ha! Huh. That one does sound intriguing. Next! I don't want to run out of time. Um, this is one that I won at the um, Goodreads giveaway, and I actually have the other one. This is um, The Doorway and the Deep, the sequel to The Water and the Wild. And I, I have The Water and the Wild. I did a review on that a while ago. So this is exciting. I have a series that I got for free. So this one's a little bit more of a quick synopsis. A red apple tree grows in the heart of Wandlebury, Wandlebury Wood. It is the burst of color in a land of silver grass and white barked yew trees, and out from its trunk step two travelers. The girl takes a small bird from her pocket, the boy takes a deep breath. And that's all it has for the introduction. Literally, that's that's it. So I'm kind of intrigued. I want to read more. Um, and since it's a sequel, I can actually read the first book first because I have both in the series. That's like, I, I have very few full series, so I'm very excited about that one. Next! This one, again, was one that was given to me from um, a friend at work. Um, uh, another Night, Another Day. Another Night, Another Day. Written from the heart by the bookseller. I guess that's one of the other critiques. So here's this one. There's Karen about to lose her father. Abby, who's, whose son has autism and needs constant care. And Michael, a family man on the verge of bankruptcy. As each sinks under the strain, they are brought together at a clinic called Moreland's Place. Here, behind closed doors, they reveal their deepest secrets, confront, console one, confront and console one another, and share plenty of laughs. But how will they cope when a new crisis strikes? Huh. Cool. Cool. Um, and then, Ninth City Burning. This is an intimidating book. This is also one that I got at Goodwe Goodreads, and it is the the longest non-Stephen King book that I that I am actually considering reading. This is 482 pages. This is a long book. But the back sounds intriguing, so I'm not as scared as, as I thought I would be. But ah, here we are. We never saw them coming. Entire cities disappeared in the blink of an eye, leaving nothing but dust and rubble. When an alien race comes to make Earth theirs, they bring with them a weapon we had no way to fight. A universe-altering force known as Thalamity. It seemed nothing could stop it, until we discovered we could wield the power too. Five hundred years later, Earth is locked in a grinding war of attrition. The talented few capable of bending Thalamity to their will are trained in elite military academies and destined for the front lines. Those who refuse to support the war have been exiled to the wilds of a, ru of a ruined Earth. But the enemy's tactics are changing, and Earth's defenders are about to realize that this centuries-old war has now just begun. As a terrible new onslaught looms, heroes will rise from unlikely quarters and fight back. <laughs> this sounds cool. I, I really want to get into this one, but I'm terrified because it's a big book. Um, I don't know if you guys don't worry at all about the big books, but they tend to, to set me into panic. But that is my Friday week book haul, um, and uh, yeah, have a good weekend and keep reading, guys.